what is the epidemiology of PAD, i.e., how common is PAD? What is the epidemiology of PAD? Well, that means how much PAD is out there, how many people have it, is it going up, down, or sideways? So, unfortunately, PAD, or peripheral arterial disease, which is arterial occlusive disease of the lower extremities, where the leg arteries become narrowed and start getting blocked or occluded. It's very common, particularly in the Western world. Um, it's related to processed food consumption primarily, and that is very high processed food consumption in the Western world. Uh, approximately 3% of the population in America has peripheral arterial disease, three out of 100 people. That's a high number. What percentage of those people have PAD to the degree that they meet the criteria for and they need a PAD revascularization procedure, the type that we perform. It's about 1.1%. So if you do some ballpark calculations in a country of about 350 million people, we're talking uh, 3.54 million people with peripheral arterial disease. It's a very high number. Um, if peripheral arterial disease is not detected early and treated, in most patients it will get worse, okay? So here's the natural course. Natural course means what happens to disease if nobody does anything, it just continues on its way. The patient doesn't do anything to change their lifestyle, their activity, their, what they eat. There's no medical intervention, procedural intervention, nothing. So if you look at PAD, it starts here, it starts you're very young, probably as a teenager in your 20s. Related to diet, lots of processed food consumption, sugar, processed carbohydrates, other processed foods, maybe smoking cigarettes. And the artery starts slowly getting blocked. It's not terrible, just a little bit, right? At this point, if you modify your nutrition, stop eating processed foods, stop smoking, it can reverse. The body can clean those arteries out naturally. But at some point, maybe in your 40s, 50s, maybe early 60s, your arteries will get clogged to a degree that it's basically impossible to reverse that now with just lifestyle modification, meaning modifying what you eat, quitting smoking. At this point, you need the procedure that we offer, which is a minimally invasive image-guided procedure. It's not a surgery. It's through a small hole in the groin. We can open up the arteries using fluoroscopy and ultrasound to guide where we're going. Okay, we can open up those arteries restore the blood flow and hopefully halt the progression of disease. Now, if you don't do that and it gets worse, the artery is going to get badly occluded. They're going to get so occluded and blocked that we won't be able to do our procedure anymore. At that point, you'll need an open surgical vascular bypass. You'll have to do bypass surgery and get another vein from your body and basically do a conduit around the blocked artery. That's a, that's a more invasive procedure. If you need that, by all means, our vascular surgeon colleagues do that and they do it well. But you want to catch the disease before that so we can perform our minimally invasive procedure. Beyond that, unfortunately, many patients, if they're not treated, they will progress. And the leg arteries will have not gotten blood for a long time. Um, the leg tissues will not have gotten blood for a long time because they've been blocked, the arteries. And irreversible tissue damage can occur. Ulcers that don't heal, skin that's dead, toes that are black and purple. This is severe. At that point, it's irreversible. Amputation will result. Now this doesn't happen with 100% of patients. Some patients stop here or stop here. But many patients, this is the natural course. So we wanna find this early. Hopefully you can modify it by lifestyle. Change what you eat, eliminate processed food, stop smoking, stay active. If not, beyond that, we can do our procedure and we can open up those arteries and prevent worsening of disease. So back to the epidemiology, how many patients have it? 3% of the U.S. population has PAD, 1.1% has PAD to the degree where they need a procedure. Now let's do a comparison, PAD versus CAD. CAD is the close cousin of PAD. PAD is peripheral arterial disease, arteries get blocked in the legs. CAD is coronary artery disease, arteries getting blocked in the heart. It's the same disease, just in a different part of the body. Most people don't know this. The prevalence of PAD is actually slightly higher than CAD, meaning more people out there have PAD than they have CAD. But think about the awareness in the general population about PAD versus CAD. Everybody knows about CAD. Every grandmother in America knows if she has chest pain, she might be having a heart attack, she needs to go to the ER, she needs to see a cardiologist. 
How does every grandmother know the exact management algorithm for chest pain and potential coronary artery disease? It's amazing because the awareness, uh, uh, the public awareness of CAD is very high. It has been for the past 30, 40 years. Despite the fact that PAD is more common, more prevalent than CAD, the awareness is much lower. How many of those same grandmothers in America, when they have leg pain, think, boy, I might have PAD. I should go see these PAD specialist people, meaning us. Very few, unfortunately. Oftentimes, leg pain and the symptoms of PAD masquerade as something else, like arthritis, restless leg syndrome, something like that. And sometimes it could be those things, but oftentimes it's PAD. So we're talking about the epidemiology of PAD, but I need to compare it to that of CAD because this, this discrepancy is worrisome for me uh, and for all Americans. We need to be more aware of PAD, not just patients, also physicians out there. Deliberately look for PAD, look for wounds on the leg that aren't healing. That's not normal. Ask about leg pain without any other obvious cause. These two are the telltale signs, non-healing wounds and or leg pain. If you're a patient or if you are a patient, you have any of these, give us a call, let us evaluate you. Let us see if you have PAD and if you do, we can help treat you and open up those arteries and prevent worsening of the disease.